Today, the Kaiser returns to Germany in 1936 in Hearts of Iron 4. And after a failed attempt at democracy, the people of the Vaterland have returned to old traditions, pulling Wilhelm out of exile in the Netherlands. With his return, Germany will follow the Kaiserreich path of their focus tree, while everyone else, barring any intervention from Germany, should stick to their historical focuses. Additional to reinstalling the Kaiser, I gave him and his government 100% popularity for ideology to make sure that his government is as stable as possible, at least in the beginning. And with no Axis faction, things will certainly look different this time around. I wonder if Germany might get the band back together for one last hurrah, assuming Italy doesn't pull an old switcheroo again. If you're enjoying the Hoi4 content on the channel, make sure you leave a like and don't forget to subscribe as well. And when you subscribe, make sure you ding the bell so you get notified whenever these new videos go live. And many of these Hoi4 videos tend to get less views than my EU4 videos because that's not my primary audience. So I would appreciate if you took the link of this video and sent it to a friend who you think might also enjoy it. Going down the rebuild the nation path after the return of the Kaiser, it looks like Germany is going to uh, hopefully set themselves up for success in the long term, but we're going to see how that goes because you guys know how Paradox AI can be. Though I'm definitely curious, without an access in the game, I'm sure it is going to make things pretty interesting. Uh, only time is going to tell which direction they go. I assume they're still going to do a bit of conquest. I'm not really sure in which direction. I've played this path myself a couple of times just like, you know, for fun. But I'm curious how the AI will go when everyone else is on historical AI focuses except for the German Empire. And after fanning some Prussian militarism, the German AI has gone down a couple of their industrial paths. They're going to get that extra research slot. They've also done army innovations, so we might see some uh, medium tanks coming from them, but uh, I don't know exactly which way they're going to go with that. And it appears that uh, the Kaiser is going to indeed go down Focus the true enemy, and uh, looks like they are going to be uh, rebuilding the Hoxie Flotta, and uh, they may actually be looking to take some land from the boys overseas. And I'm sure I would have mentioned this in the intro, but I have decolonized Africa as well as Asia and the New World. These are all independent nations. And in those rules, I set it to also allow any nation in the world to justify a war goal whenever there is 100% world tension. So we should see some interesting border changes, at least I hope we do. But I think I know who I'm going to be rooting for this time around. In exchange for guarantees of peace, the Polish have given the Polish corridor, the Danzig corridor or whatever this area is called, back to the German Empire. And they also have Memel as well. So the German borders are looking pretty aesthetic, I have to say. But now we're going to have to see where they take it from here. War is inevitable. It will happen. It's just a matter of with who and when. And unrelated to Europe, but uh, Papa Mao over here in communist China has not only left the Chinese United Front, but has also decided to go to war with China while they're at war with Japan. So I don't really know what to expect from this. I'm not sure if we're going to see a communist China this time around. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. And uh, we got big old Benito over here with the Novus Imperium Romanum formed. And uh, he is actually taking some land from Yugoslavia via decisions as well as uh, Albania. Zog has submitted so uh, it looks like uh, Italy has their own faction. Now, uh, it's only a matter of time before the Germans form a faction or join one. I think they will form the Central Powers, maybe with Turkey. Don't know how that works. Ah, uh, yeah, it's all coming together. And the inaugural members of the Central Powers, Germany and Bulgaria. But uh, a new member of the Allies, uh, Italy has decided to switch sides. Big surprise there. And they are now a member of the Allies. So I actually didn't think that was going to happen, but it indeed did happen. And the weird part is, is they are still fascist and they still have Benito Mussolini in charge. So it's anybody's guess as to why they would actually give up their own faction to join the allies. So Germany is now at war with the Soviets and it's because Mannerheim decided that he wanted to become one of the central powers as well. So I don't see this going well for the Finns. I imagine that they're going to get steamrolled and the fact that they're now in part of a faction with a major, I, I don't think they can get that uh, Winter War piece. So the Winter War is actually possibly going to kick off the major war this time around. Meanwhile, Mao not looking good, not <laughs> looking good at all. And if the Soviets didn't start the Second World War by attacking Finland, 
I have a feeling that to break the Anglo-French colonial hegemony may cause that as well. And despite them being decolonized, they actually get annexed war goals on the countries themselves. And they're probably going to push it. I would be surprised if they didn't. And with their focus completed, the Germans have attacked Namibia and Tanzania in Africa. I assume that those guys are going to join factions, but it might actually just be a conquest war in Africa. We'll see. Yeah, they're all joining the common turn. So this war is going to get very big very quickly, especially if Germany keeps attacking a bunch of random nations in Africa. Hey, uh, Lithuania, are you sure you want to join the Soviets? Uh, but, okay, I guess you're going to join the join the Germans now instead. And now the second war has started with Germany attacking the United Kingdom directly and their allies of France have joined. However, it looks like uh, Mussolini actually switched again. And instead of having the Nova Imperium Romanum, they have the regular Imperium Romanum and Portugal's in it because because reasons. They're actually a subject of Italy. So, uh, all right. So Austria-Hungary has reformed and has joined the Central Powers and uh, Mussolini has uh, committed oof, and he is now out. And we have um, Vittorio Emmanuel in Italy, who has also joined the Central Powers. So the balance of power has certainly shifted towards the Central Powers. So we'll see how that goes, because there is very soon to be a war on two fronts as soon as Latvia joins one of the nations. Also, it's kind of funny to see Imperium Romanum over Romania, right? Like Romania, Roman, Romanum. I don't know. I, I think it's pretty good. And meanwhile, it's October of 1940, and we still have the Spanish Civil War going on, so Franco is definitely struggling down here. And color me shocked, it is a Thunderdome over in the Balkans, with Yugoslavia joining the Allies, and then Greece joining the Roman Empire here, with uh, Romania, with, uh, you know, Bulgaria just chilling here in the middle. So we'll see how the borders end up over here. Uh, I'm not really going to get my hopes up for the Allies or the guys. I'm pretty sure it's going to go to the Central Powers, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong once or twice before, but only once or twice. But if and when they get through Romania, there will be a front line with the Soviets down here in Bessarabia. And Latvia is still very close to going one way or the other. And uh, they're just going to basically go around Poland. Instead of going around the Maginot, they're going to go around Poland. <laughs> and yep, the around Poland focus has been completed and the German Empire is marching into the Baltic states. And sadly, it looks like Poland is actually going to go as well because the Germans said, well, well, you know, while we're here, we might as well, you know, take all of Poland. So rip Poland. Even with the return of the Kaiser, Poland is not safe. Apparently you hate to see it, folks. And it looks like it is time to a uh, Schlieffen once more going around the Maginot down through the speed bump that is the lowlands and a small logistical deficit for the Soviets. We've got to only minus 10,000 trucks minus 3000 anti-air minus 3000 anti-tank maybe they can overcome this we'll see how things go with that now would probably be a pretty good time for some lend lease eh? and it appears that for switzerland neutrality was never an option a bit of a push into southern france and more importantly a big push over here into russia and into the balkans with the central powers controlling all of it and it looks like japan was actually pushed out of china with Qing being the only one at war with china currently Korea is independent and Japan is just on their island, you know, making anime or whatever they do over there. France has fallen and Free France exists in the south instead of Vichy France because reasons. And they have mopped up all of the men along the Maginot and we actually have the Dutch Reich has joined. And all of the politics aside, I don't know anything about this guy, this Anton Mussert or whatever. But you got to admit, he kind of looks like a middle-aged flurry worry. Like, let me know if you guys agree with this. I swear, I see this guy in every single time. I'm like, this guy looks like an old Flory. And he's even Dutch too, which makes it kind of funny in that regard as well. And as if Italy cannot be any more weird, they have switched over again, not against the Germans, but into another faction of their own, the Covenant of the Mediterranean, forming it with Turkey. Uh, and so things are looking a little strange. Strange aside from the fact that the Germans full annexed the Soviet Union entirely. Like the, the war is over, the peace deal has been signed, the Finns took a couple of provinces up here and the Germans took the rest. Also Iran is in the central powers and they took a couple of provinces over here. And now South America decides that they want to join as well because sure, why not? Their strength in numbers, I suppose. And with the naval invasion of the United Kingdom, they're going to crumble and they are the last major of the Allies. And it looks like the German Empire is uh, definitely making it happen this time around. And there it is, German Empire all the way from Scotland to Vladivostok. And uh, 
I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. I'd love to see a Dutch Reich here and an Austria-Hungary that formed, and I think that forms as part of the uh, Kaiser Reich path for Germany, the Kingdom of Italy forming and the getting Turkey into a faction with them, as well as Portugal and a bunch of the South American nations. That's a nice touch. And somewhere along the way, and I don't know why, Germany invaded India and uh, annexed them. So that's a thing. So German Empire stronger than vanilla Germany? I think so. Special thanks to ALS Gamer, Legrand Puba, Chio, Josh Kapchinski, Adam Rhino, Juan Damon, Cannon Fodder, and many more. If you want to see your name here and early access to these videos, check out the join button below the video or the Patreon linked in the description.